Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Just Code It. Today, we're going to create a chatbot using Streamlit and a little bit of Langchain and using two different chat models, Olama and OpenAI. What I have up right now is just a template that we're going to use for this app where we're going to load the environment variables. In this .env file, you should load your... I'll open up my example. Load your OpenAI API key. So you would just input it there. And then this will load that environment variable. You go a, bit, a little bit down. I like using a lot of methods when creating Streamlit apps because it makes it a lot easier when the app gets more complex to move functionality of the app to different uh, files. Here, this is just the page config where we're going to set up the page config, the title of the page, and then I also added this expander, as you can see in the app, that I like using for debugging. It allows us to see the session state, and you can throw any other variables you want to debug in there. And then to display it on the screen, you just call the method that you want, and it will display it on the screen. So if we get rid of that, it goes blank. This allows you to break up your application, your Streamlit application into components. After setting up the page config, we're going to create a function called handle sidebar. Handle sidebar is going to have some of the functionality for selecting different models. So how we're going to set it up is we have a list right here, or this is actually a tuple, of the model names, and these are just models that I got from Olama. So Olama pool model name. And if you don't know the name of your model, you can do Olama LS, which lists the name of all your models, and you just grab them right from there. And then the OpenAI model that you would like to use, and then we're going to do a check later on that basically uses either chat Olama or chat OpenAI to, to be used in the chat. But And then we added a little divider for some spacing. After that, we're going to add another little section that's going to have two buttons, one to clear the chat and the other to clear the cache. We're going to actually use the cache to cache the model, which for Olama can help. Finally, after that, we're just going to add another little section that just shows what model we actually have selected. And we are going to return the selected model. So that is it. I'm going to actually make this a little less big so it's a little bit easier to navigate. That handles all the sidebar. Here you can see we can select different models and it will pop up there. And then session state model is in there. All right, I was about to say uh, that didn't change in the session state, but there it went. Okay, that is it for the sidebar. So after the sidebar, we're going to create another method called get chat model. And this will use the st cache. So do the st cache resource and then do define get. And from there, we're going to do a simple check. Um, where we're going to check the model name. If it equals this, then we're going to use the OpenAI chat model. If it doesn't equal that, it's going to be an Olama model where we'll take that model name and then pass it to the Olama. It then just returns those objects. The next method that we're going to create is a function that displays the chat messages on the screen. And we're going to we're going to loop through the messages in the session state. So if you look at the session, uh, we don't, oh, we're going to have an issue. So we actually need to initialize the session state. So if you want to go down to the main flow and we're going to set up the chat model is equal to... Oh, wait, we're messed up twice, actually. I'm going to set this equal to chat model. 
And then we're going to do, oh wait, selected model. We're going to take this and do selected model. And then chat model equals get chat model selected model there. And then we also need to initialize the chat session state. What is the error it's giving us? Just needed to reload there. This will initialize that chat session state message variable. It will initialize it to your helpful AI assistant as the system message. And then now we can go back up and start working on the display chat again. So display chat message from this, we're going to loop over these messages in this session state. And if it's an instance of a human message, then we display it in the human, the user message, this like streamlit chat message, it has this user. So we then write the message as a user message. If it's a AI message, we're going to then display it as an assistant message in there. Later on, once we are able to start sending messages, you'll see there's a little bit of a different look between the two types of messages. After creating the display chat method, we're going to create a new method called handle user input which takes in a chat model. Here we take in a chat model and we can come down here so we can view it on the screen as we create it. Handle chat model there. If we reload the page. So as you can see, now we have the chat interface set up, the input box. In here, we're setting the chat input to whatever you want that ghost text to be and then we will append the new message to a human message when input is given. Finally, for display chat messages, we're going to then come down to the main execution flow and have it start showing display chat messages. So now that will add those elements once we start doing user inputs. After that, we're going to move on to the handling those user inputs. You're going to create a function called handle user inputs, which takes in the chat model. If we come down to the bottom and then add this to the hand, handle user input in the main execution flow, and we rerun, you now get the text input chat interface at the bottom and then that text right here is the ghost text in the chat input. Basically what this does though is takes that chat input text and then we'll add it as a human message to the state variable messages and it will append this message to there. And then with chat input basically it will then write that whatever the chat input is to the streamlit application. So if we go down to the chat input and just type in hi, it writes it to the interface and we have the session state in there. Next, we're going to do the same thing, but with the assistant chat message, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a with chat message for the assistant. We're going to have a placeholder empty and then full response. So we're going to do a streaming. We're going to stream back the response. To do that, we're going to have the full response. And we're just going to basically keep appending or adding the new words to it until it's uh, until the end. To do that, we take the chat model and then for each chunk in the chat model, basically each of those like iterations of it streaming it back, we're then going to stream the we're going to stream to the chat model and give it the user input that is defined by the chat user input. And then this right here updates the response content. After the chunking is all done and we have streamed everything, just to make it easy, we display the final response. So we'll display it, it as markdown and append the 
response to the AI message in the session state. So this will start displaying it. Let's just rerun it again. So if you come down here and that should now be most of it. I think that is all of the inputs that we need. I actually unaccidentally imported another file there. That's why I was getting those weird errors. After we created this handle user input, we basically are done. If you want to reload the page, come down here, add it to the main execution flow, reload the page, and you can just type in hi, await, or tell me a long story this will show the streaming probably yep so that checks to make sure the streaming is working and then the other thing we want to check after the story's done is we want to check to make sure the open ai is working oh okay that worked let's clear the chat that's working tell me a, a story again Yep, stream is working for the open AI as well. That is it for a simple chat interface using our simple chat app in Streamlit. Up next, we're gonna elaborate on this chat app and make it more complex, adding more functionality to it. And eventually we're gonna add a rag component to it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next time.